Hello, we're group number four. The name of our uh, uh, project is Space Exploration Hexapod. The members of our group is uh, Dan, Kim, and myself, Morella. Uh, the most important feature of this project is the system versatility, the mode selection, and the pulse width, proportional control. Now, with the mode selection, with the mode select, uh, we, the user can actually select whether to um, use it, um, whether it should be autonomous control or uh, uh, human control. Uh, later on on the, on the presentation, we will talk about the walking guides and the hardware used. The system versatility, uh, because of the enhanced interfacing, we were able to um, develop an extreme extremely useful robot. The robot can be switched from autonomous to human control on the fly. When it's on the human control, uh, we can actually select between rough terrain mode and uh, or level ground to save power. Now the autonomous mode involves uh, the use of both infrared and sonar, sonar to distinguish between rough terrain and very large obstacles. All right, now um, I'm going to talk about hardware for our robot. Um, basically, the, our robot uses hundreds of pieces, including um, 12 um, 180 degree servos and all the miscellaneous parts. But um, the boards, the controlling boards, is the heart of our system. Um, originally, we were going to use the uh, Bobot um, board education, but it was not able to handle all the servos that we were going to use. So we ended up buying the SEC32. It's capable of handling 32 servos. Also, um, for the artifi artificial intelligence, we end up buying the um, ABB board, which is what controls every, every decision. Um, now, um, the walking gates. Basically, there's two modes for this robot besides um, remote control and artificial intelligence. It's all-terrain and level um, ground mode. Basically, this is the motion of the leg how it moves when it's um, in all terrain mode because it's trying to avoid or it's trying to climb up over the object. This is the traditional or the level ground. It's the motion is less, actually it's basically a square. And the way, the reason we do that is just to save energy. It doesn't have to do extra motion, extra displacement for no reason and therefore saving energy. Now the mode select, the remote control actually um, um, we, could, we could control, we could monitor the robot, and then if we decide there's an emergency, it could be switched into um, to remote control, um, use, utilizing our Futaba um, remote controller. Um, this is uh, um, accomplished using an array of do unto commands and interfacing post with, because our um, robot actually, it's, um, if you move it a little bit, Oh, it will, depending how much you actually move the controller, it's sensitive um, to that and it will only um, produce that amount of motion. Okay, I would like to talk about um, the autonomous control uh, within the robot. Um, the robot is designed to interpret its terrain condition using uh, two different sensors. Uh, there's one main sensor, which is the sonar, that, that interprets large obstacles like a wall or something that's above it, something big. And there's infrared that's below, underneath the chassis, that can, uh, that can identify, say, a rock that's just high enough that it can crawl over. So I'm going to show you guys where the sensors are located. So if you look up here, you'll see the sonar. This is the main, uh, this is the main obstacle avoidance sensory input. And underneath here, you'll see the infrared, which can see objects about so high. Now, the decision is made if I should crawl over it or not within the, within the microprocessor. The, the problem we have with this microprocessor is that it couldn't store enough memory. This, this robot is, is, a, is a pretty serious, so it, the BS2 could not really store that much memory, so we have to sort of simplify the program a little. Now, notice here, you see a low obstacle. The IR will detect it and will attempt to climb over it. 
um, it, will, it will skip out of its uh, level ground mode into all-terrain mode. And in all-terrain mode, you'll see the legs lifting up high, trying to climb above whatever it is that's low, below it. A high obstacle, both the sonar and the IR will see this large ob obstacle, and it will just turn away, regular roaming. Now, again, if, say, you want to control the robot while it's in motion, whatever it's doing, you have the ability to, from the controller, to switch between autonomous and human control. So let's say it's an emergency or it's about to fall off or something, you can switch between autonomous and human control. The way that's done is by, um, what, it, what we use is a pulse in command, and the pulse in command will register the position of the controller. And if I say I want the controller to be, let's say when I pull left, I want the robot to go to autonomous control. So it'll do whatever it wants. Now, if I push the stick right just one time, it'll go into RC mode. I control it. And this do, this do until loop will continue until, you know, whatever, it, whatever mode it's in, it will just con continue testing for that. Now, pulse width is extremely important because throughout this whole project, we had to take pulse width from the receiver, from the receiver that's in here, actually, uh, that's, uh, that corresponds to the throttle position of the controller, and we took that pulse width and we interpreted it into uh, forward speed. So it doesn't just go full on, full off. It doesn't just go on, off. It's, it varies the gate to walk proportional to throttle position. So it's not just one of those, it's not just on and off. It's, it's, it has a transfer function that does that. Um, also, um, I think we talked about the pulse in. So for the pulse in command, you guys, you know, we use that for the receiver. The receiver is not part of this kit. The, the, the kit actually is, it's, not, it's, it's a bunch of parts you get, a chassis and legs, but the receiver and a bunch of other things in here and sensory, the IR, the IR is not designed to work with this board. We, you could tell we actually had to custom make a whole bunch of uh, servo cables, extra servo cables, and, and a bunch of things that, that we had to interface. And actually this has not been done before. So uh, it's, it's sort of a new program. And that's pretty much our, our design. We wanted to uh, do a little demonstration. If, 